Okay, so in this quick video here, we're going to go over the basic differences in a science experiment between the independent variable versus the dependent variable. You know, every year when I do science experiments, it seems that I still have a number of students who at the end of the school year are kind of still mixing the two up. So hopefully this video will be a little helpful. Here we go. So when we go into the independent and the dependent variable, we need to examine the the two major parts of a science experiment. And you might know that one part of an, of an experiment is called the control group and the other part is called the experimental group. Well, what is so special about the control group is really nothing at all. The control group is the part of the experiment that receives no special treatment. And the purpose of the control group is it's going to give us some data and we're going to use that data, we're going to compare that data to the other group. We're going to compare the data of the control group to the data of the experimental group. So if the control group receives no special treatment, that means whatever we're, we're testing, the experimental group is going to receive. And so the experimental group is the part of the experiment. You set them up exactly the same, the experimental group and the control group. But the experimental group is the part of the experiment that receives whatever it is you're testing. And whatever it is that you're testing is what we call the independent variable. It's the one factor that's different from the control group. It's what you're testing. Let's see if we can go over a, a, a simple example. Here we have a picture of a young lady sleeping. Let's pretend that she wanted to know what effect does music have on the ability to sleep through the night. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an experiment. One group of test subjects are going to listen to music while they sleep. One group of test subjects are not. Let's go through that right now. So when we set up a control group and an experimental group, you see that we keep them exactly the same. That means both groups of test subjects, whether it's only one person or 50 people or 100 people, let's say that we have uh, you know, 50 people in the control group and 50 people in the experimental group. Well, we're going to make sure that they have a nice, comfortable bed to sleep upon. Both groups, we're going to ask them during the day, both groups, we're going to ask them to do fairly similar at physical fitness and, you know, try and stay in good shape and practice good health. Both groups, we're going to try to balance out their diet, have a well-balanced meal, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and we're going to try, notice how the two groups are exactly the same so far. And then the one thing that's going to be different is, okay, the experimental group receives the experimental factor. The, in this case, whether or not they get to listen to music while they're sleeping. Now, please note that this, this example is fairly simplistic. Yes, there are other ex experimental factors we would need to set. You know, the age of the participants, the gender of the participants. Again, we're just kind of going over the broad concept right here. And so after the experiment is finished, let's say that you record the amount of sleep that the two groups uh, achieve for a month. And over the course of one month, uh, the control group, who did not get to listen to music, they slept continuously for about six hours and then they woke up. But then the experimental group, they slept continuously for about eight hours. And so when we look at this, this data here is what we call the dependent variable. The data that you collect, your results. The reason it's called the dependent variable because the sleep depended on the sleep, the amount of sleep depended on whether or not they had music. The dependent variable depends on the independent variable. And so that's why it's called that. And so anytime you're measuring data in a science experiment, the data that you collect is your dependent variable. Let's go over another example of something. Is this a good experiment? Again, I haven't changed any of the text, but watch the, two, the pictures that show up. Let's say, again, you're going to do the sleep and the music experiment. And so, again, all the test subjects of the control group get a nice, comfortable bed. All the test subjects of the experimental group get a nice, comfortable bed. During the day, however, you have them perform different exercises. During the day, you have them consume different kinds of food. And then when they sleep, the experimental group receives music. The control group does not receive music. And let's look at the data. After one month, pretend that 
just like last time, pretend that after one month, the control group on average slept for about six hours before they awoke, and the experimental group slept for about eight hours before they awoke. I hope you see a problem with this experiment here. This experiment, the results of this experiment would be invalid. This experiment has too many independent variables. There's too many things that have changed between the control and experimental group. Not only have you changed the music, you also changed the food that the people eat and the activities they perform while they're awake. Those also could cause people to sleep longer. Perhaps the meal, the meals that you're eating are giving you, are allowing you to have a better night's sleep. Per, maybe you're just more tired because the exercise is more strenuous and that's why you slept a, a, a total of eight hours. Maybe you slept longer and, and music had nothing to do with it. So this is why a good experiment only has one independent variable. Well here, go over a couple examples. Watch this. So here we have some army soldiers and here's a little experiment, a fictional experiment here. And it says the United States military wants to see if soldiers with only four hours of sleep can operate at the same level as those who normally get seven hours of sleep. 100 soldiers are allowed to sleep for four hours a night and another 100 are allowed to sleep for seven hours a night. During the day, the, the soldiers are tested for marksmanship on the firing range. Well, Try to answer these questions. Name the control group, experimental group, independent variable, dependent variable. Pause the video. Pause the video. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. All right, so for the control group, these are the test subjects that receive the normal. And it's normal to get about seven hours sleep. I think that's pretty normal even in the military. What's abnormal, what's different, is the experimental group. And in this case, what's different are those who may only get four hours of sleep. And so when you look at the next part, name the independent variable. The independent variable is what's been changed, what's different between the two groups of test subjects. What's different between the two groups of subjects is the amount of sleep that they are given. And then the last one about naming the, the dependent variable. Remember, the dependent variable is the data that we collected. How do we know if sleep affected them? What data are we collecting? In this case, the data we're collecting is the score on the firing range. Can they hit the target well? Can they hit the bullseye? So here's another example. In this example, here we have this farmer right here, and this farmer is going to be testing his fertilizer. So here's a picture of the fertilizer that he normally uses to grow his crops. Here's my little story here. Farmer Bob wants to test a new fertilizer to help his crops grow better. He sections off two large areas of his field. In section A, he waters his crops as usual and uses his normal fertilizer. But in section B, he waters his crops as usual and adds an experimental fertilizer. So after one growing season, he records the growth of the crops. So just like the last example with the army soldiers, pause the video and try to answer these four questions here. Pause the video. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. Okay, so identifying the control group. Remember, the control group is the normal. And in this case, the normal section of crops is section A. Remember, the experimental group is something that we've changed. We've done something different to the experimental group, and that would be section B of, of the farmer's crops. And so name the independent variable. What's different between section A and section B? There should only be one thing different. If you have more than one thing different, you have a badly designed experiment. But in this case, there's only one thing different between section A and section B. And that's the type of fertilizer that the farmer uses. He still, he still waters the crops as usual, but he's using a different fertilizer. Name the dependent variable. How does he know if his traditional fertilizer is better? How does he know if the experimental fertilizer is better? He has to measure something. That's the dependent variable. He's measuring the growth of the crops. And the la uh, one more example, if, uh, in, in case you, you're still not quite sure. Here's one last example. Here we have a young student. 
And this student wants to know if his new study method is more successful than a, a, a traditional study method he's been using for years. So for one month, he studies for his classes using his traditional study method. The next month, he studies for his classes using a new study method. And at the end of both of the study peri periods of time, he simply compares his grades that he earned in school. So just like the last two examples, pause the video, pause the video, and try to answer these four questions. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So I hope you see the control group would be him studying with his usual, his traditional study methods, because that's uh, that's what he's always done. There's nothing special there. So for that one month time when he was studying with his traditional methods, that's the control group. The experimental group is that one month of uh, one month period of time when he used the experimental uh, study method. Again, the experimental group is the group that you've done something different to. And so in that second month, he was different because he was using some new uh, experimental study method. Name the independent variable. What's different between those two months? Well, what's different is his study method. Was he using traditional methods or experimental methods? And so that is what the independent variable is. It's the, the, the difference between the two. And in this case, it was how he was studying. Name the dependent variable. How does he know what study method's better? He has to have some data. The data that he has are the grades that he's earned. During one month, he earned grades while he studied traditionally. During one month, he earned grades while he studied with his experimental method. And he just compared the two. So the dependent variable is his data, his grades. And that's it. That's, that's the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if if you're in my biology class and you still need some extra help, come on in and I'd be happy to go over, uh, go over this with you.